Welcome to the weekly wrap up. I'm Darren McDermott. Well, it has been quite an interesting week for central banks as we saw rate hikes in India, South Africa and Turkey. We also had the release of the Fed minutes. I'm joined by James Watterson from World Economics in London to see what sort of start to the year he thinks the US, China, Mexico and the Philippines have had. So as I mentioned, James, we had the Fed meeting minutes on Wednesday. Now, the sales managers index reports robust economic activity in January of this year. Now, U.S. confidence is at a two year high. So can you tell us some more? Yeah, that's right. Um, ever since the, um, the shock shut down in October, our index has actually started climbing again. And in January, it hit a two year high for future business conditions. Uh, panelists have told us that it's a combination of an improved worldwide outlook as well as an improved internal U.S. outlook, and that means they're very confident about the coming months. This is matched by other um, consumer indicators such as the Conference Board, which have also seen increasing business confidence and consumer confidence rising in January. Now, this is really important because if people are feeling more secure in their jobs and their incomes are rising, they're going to they're going to feed that money back into businesses. So that's very good news. There really does appear to be a very strong optimism at the moment in the U.S., and that's reflected in the Fed's decision to start tapering. Um, Obviously, there have been short-term jitters, especially in the stock market. But overall, I think everything's looking pretty solid at the moment. China's SMI headline index continues to show strong growth, and business confidence rose for the sixth month. However, James, sales managers have expressed concern over the valuation of the yuan in January. 20% of respondents believe it is having a negative impact on their business. So can you tell us what you think? Okay, so China's had an interesting first month of the year. As we head into the new year um, this evening, our index showed it's been a pretty good month for the Chinese economy on an overall basis. The market growth and sales index has both posted good results. Um, with the index growth has only been measured in very small increments, they have been registering high figures, which represent strong economic development. When it comes to the value of the yuan, um, it is clear it's having some kind of dampening effect on business as a whole. The World Price Index revealed earlier in January that the RMB might be undervalued by up to 7%, and our sales manager index also reinforces that point. The low value is going to have a positive effect because it makes exports much cheaper, but it will hurt the growing internal consumer market as imported goods start to attract a premium. Um, And finally, the growth seen in some of the Western economies should now start to filter back through to the manufacturing centers in China. So while some industrial figures might not have been as strong as expected, we can certainly expect an increase in, in the future. And now, James, let's move over to Mexico. What sort of start to the year is Mexico having and what is investor sentiment like? Yeah, unfortunately, Mexico didn't have a fantastic 2013 in economic terms. But the first indicator in 2014 should give investors and business a lot of hope. Um, GDP expansion in 2013 wasn't great, but they really do seem to have got off to a flying start in 2014. Price inflation has been low, but it has been um, for as long as the index has been running. But confidence has been rebounding, and it's extremely high. Um, It's clear that the Mexican government is trying very hard to attract investors, and our panelists have explained that they really have been carrying out energetic reforms in key business areas, especially taxation. Um, These are supposed to start taking effect in the coming months, hopefully. And panelists have explained that ahead of these reforms, um, it's been driving investment from abroad as well as encouraging business development at home. So it's very positive news. And focusing on the Philippines, now despite Typhoon Haiyan in November, the Philippines has had a pretty bullish beginning to 2014. Now how has it managed to not allow the disaster to badly affect the economy? And what are the main driving factors behind a successful start to the year? Yeah, um, the Philippine economy is, is an astounding success story. Um, it had that terrible typhoon and an, an earthquake as well, and it's weathered these disasters surprisingly well. Um, it's clearly a testament to the strong foundations upon which the economy is built. Um, our January SMI showed that business confidence is extremely high, in part thanks to government, government investment and foreign aid that's really been pouring into the country. 
um, established as well as new businesses have been really quite well positioned to take advantage of all this investment flowing into the country. Um, and our panelists have said that as the country rebuilds and the infrastructure gets back on its feet, there is definitely scope for, for continued expansion. Um, of course, price inflation is the only dark spot in that. Um, but with logistic and supply chains and tatters, as well as electricity supply challenges, um, including brownouts, um, it's clear that some goods will attract price premiums. But despite this, the economy is in very good shape, and we can truly expect the strong run of figures to continue in the near future. James, thank you very much. Well, viewers, make sure you check out my interviews on South Africa and India, and of course, Monica Gibson's interview on Turkey's rate hike. Enjoy your weekend. Goodbye for now.